The next piece of the armor is the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. So Ephesians 6.15 says, And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And the Greek word translated fitted is only used in two other places in the New Testament. And both of these places, it's putting on sandals. And once again, the Greek indicates that the believer is responsible for shodding their feet. And Harold Honer says, quote, readiness has its source in the gospel, the contents of which is peace. The Roman soldiers wore shoes that were designed to endure long marches and provide maneuverability in battle. And Andrew Lincoln says, quote, proper footwear is required if the soldier is to be ready for combat, end quote. Well, that seems obvious, of course. And at times the Roman soldiers would wear boots that were studded with nails to ensure a firm grip. And Harold Honer believes that it was this type of footwear that Paul had in mind. And he says, quote, this verb to shod rather than the noun for sandal is used in this context. These were not running sandals, but ones able to dig in with their hollow headed hobnails and stand against the enemy, end quote. And Lynn Kohick says, quote, believers' feet are made ready through the gospel of peace because they prepared well in understanding the gospel message. They know the true word of peace gained through Christ's work on the cross and can defend themselves against the devil's lies. The readiness is not related to the work of the evangelist preaching in the city's marketplace, but reflects the verbal defense of one's views to those who ask or challenge the believer's Christian convictions. The gospel is defined as peace, and this peace is found in the person and work of Christ. Lincoln has a bit of a different take, and he says, quote, It is significant that the writer does not refer directly to the footwear, but instead talks of the feet being fitted or shod, showing again that he is primarily influenced by the language of an Old Testament passage, which mentions feet in connection with proclaiming the gospel of peace, end quote. And that verse is Isaiah 52, verse 7, which says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. And also in Nahum uh, chapter 1, verse 15, which says, Behold, upon the mountains the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace. But Paul here, according to Lincoln's view, is not emphasizing the preaching of the gospel, but the readiness the gospel of peace provides to those who fit it properly as though it were footwear. So Lincoln says, quote, The reference is not to readiness to proclaim the gospel, but to the readiness or preparedness for combat and for standing in the battle that is bestowed by the gospel of peace. The emphasis is paradoxical. It is the appropriation of the gospel of peace that makes one ready for war. Believers' preparation for standing firm and prevailing against the alienating and fragmenting powers of evil is the harmony produced by the gospel, end quote. So it's interesting that Kohik says that what Paul's talking about is preaching the gospel, and Lincoln says that Paul is definitely not talking about preaching the gospel. So I try to present in my studies here different views uh, some of the different views of the academic community and the scholars because it's often interesting where they don't agree and why. Um, and I think here I'm going to present also Clint Arnold's view, and I think he his view is much closer to Lynn Kohick's view, and I tend to agree with Arnold um, in, his, in what he says and how he says it. So Arnold here, his view as I said, is much closer to Kohik's, but it's a, it's has a little bit a uh, slight difference to it. He believes that sharing the gospel of peace is exactly what Paul has in mind, which is the exact opposite of what Arnold's saying. And Arnold says, quote, the third form of preparation is to ready themselves to share the gospel, end quote, which again is directly opposite of what Andrew Lincoln said. So just that's something to keep in mind if anybody out there that's listening to me is also reading the academic material like I am, that these scholars, these you know, people who are in that world, the professionals who can read the languages and do this kind of work, don't agree uh, with each other at all times. And often they don't agree. 
So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but Arnold, Clinton Arnold, he quotes a scholar named Opke, who says, quote, Paul has in mind the joyful proclamation of the gospel in the Messianic New Testament period, a readiness for active propagation of the gospel, which is the most effective means of combating satanic powers, end quote. And Marcus Barth, he says, quote, the Messianic peace gives the strength to resist demonic attacks, end quote. So... Again, Clint Arnold is one that believes that the armor is best viewed as both defensive and offensive, and I have agreed with Arnold on that point as we've gone. So again, I think Arnold, and uh, again, since his his view is very similar to Lynn Kohick's view, uh, I think that is the best understanding, at least uh, that's my current understanding here. So... Um, so with that being said, we could ask, who are we at peace with that prepares us to stand in the spiritual warfare? Is this peace with God or peace with others or both? Is this a statement about our being right with God or a statement about the Christian community? And it seems both are in view. And here I like what Andrew Lincoln says, and he says, quote, this is a peace with both vertical and horizontal axes. Peace with God the Father and peace between human beings. Its realization in the church not only sounds the death knell for opposing cosmic powers, but also leads to the intensification of their opposition. A continuing preservation and appropriation of the gospel of peace is necessary if the powers are to be resisted and if believers are to be ready to make their stand in the world. The stand that is in line with their calling." End quote. So in other words, just as the Roman soldiers' boots were studded with nails to ensure their immovability and preparedness to stand firm in any situation, so we as believers are to have our feet fitted and studded with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The peace we have with God and other believers are the nails in our boots that prevent us from being pushed around by the world and the evil powers that control it. We're not going to battle with the uncertainty of flip-flops. We're going with the confidence of the nail-studded boots of the gospel of peace. The darkness has been defeated and Christ is our peace, as Paul said in Ephesians 2.14. And we stand in him and because of him. As Paul said in 2 Thessalonians 3.16, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you his peace at all times and in every situation. And Clinton Arnold says, quote, The proclamation of the gospel represents a major assault on the kingdom of Satan. The heart of the gospel message is the good news that Jesus Christ can now be our peace because he has shed his blood for the forgiveness of sin. Spreading the good news means opposing the work of the principalities and powers who endeavor to blind the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. And Arnold goes on to say, Christian soldiers do not stay in the camp, but move out into enemy territory. This is the point of the preparation of the gospel of peace. Believers are called to prepare themselves to share the gospel wherever the commander, the Lord, calls them to go. End quote. And multiple scholars note the paradox of Paul mentioning peace in a passage detailing war. And Marcus Barth says, it seems paradoxical that the Messiah's peace should issue in war, end quote. And Harold Honer, as I've often used him as a sort of summary, um, as we end each of the pieces of armor, I'm so going to use him here. He says, quote, it is the believer's sure-footedness in the tranquility of the mind and security of the heart in the gospel of peace that gives them readiness to stand against the devil and his angelic hosts. It is somewhat paradoxical that the gospel of peace is the preparation for warfare against the hosts of evil." End quote. Thank you for listening. I'll be posting the next section of this study in the next video. So if you like the content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of this series or any of the upcoming videos. And here, if you look to the screen right now, is the list of sources that I've used in preparing this entire study. 
I hope you enjoy and are blessed by it. God bless.